from D. James Kennedy Ministries. This is Kennedy Classics. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. How do we live in a culture that perceives our light as darkness? That's the question. How will you respond faithfully when faced with the transgender phenomenon, growing socialism, and false gospels? Dr. Erwin Lutzer lays out a roadmap to navigate these challenges and more in his book, The Church in Babylon, Heeding the Call to Be a Light in the Darkness. What are those elements that are needed for a church to actually survive in Babylon and not just survive, but also thrive in Babylon? Contact us today to receive your copy of The Church in Babylon. This book will help equip you to stand for God in a culture that rejects Him. Hello, I'm Frank Wright, president of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. We live in a culture that is increasingly hostile to Christianity and to biblical values. From the transgender and homosexual agenda on the one hand, to the multicultural melting pot that demands that we hold all religious views as equally valid, on the other hand, historic Christian orthodoxy on cultural issues is under fire. Perhaps you yourself have felt the pressure to keep quiet when a controversial political issue arises. Since holding a Christian view, can cause you to be marginalized and even derided. Yet Jesus Christ calls us to faithfulness, even in the face of hostility. A great many Christians around the world are right now facing unimaginable oppression because of their Christian faith. How can they and we remain faithful under the world's disapproval? Dr. D. James Kennedy tells us in his powerful message, Semper Fi. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the second chapter of the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John. Chapter 2, verse 8. The letter of Christ to the church in Smyrna. May we hear the word of our God. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt, of the second death. And may God speak to us today through this portion of his holy word, and may his name be ever glorified. Amen. It was night time when we landed at the airport, and a deep darkness hung over the countryside. The stars glittered with unusual brightness in a moonless sky. We were excited, my wife Anne and I, as we got into a cab to make our way in to the city of Izmir. 
Now the city was located on the opposite side of a bay from the airport, and so we drove around the bay. The night was windless as well, and the water was as smooth as a black mirror. The city of Izmir is located upon a high hill, and it was scintillating with lights, brilliant lights, which were reflected perfectly off the black surface of the water beneath. It was without any doubt, we both agreed, the most magnificent approach to any city that I have ever visited, and I have visited a lot of cities. Why Izmir? where we had flown in a brief flight from Istanbul, located about 20 miles north of the city of Ephesus, in what once was Asia Minor, but now is Turkey, is of course the modern name for the ancient city of Smyrna, to which church at Smyrna Christ wrote one of the letters to the seven churches from Christ that are included in the second and third chapters of the book of Revelation, and which letter I read to you this morning. And toward the end of that letter, there is that famous statement from Christ where he says, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. A glorious text, and it seems like the concepts of fidelity and honor and loyalty are disappearing from our culture. This was not true, however, in Smyrna. In the centuries before Christ, Smyrna had become a Roman colony, and they were noted for their faithfulness, for their fidelity, to the empire and to the Caesar. And when other cities were attempting to secede, when treachery and conspiracies were abounding, where wars are raging around them, the city of Smyrna remained ever faithful. And in the first century AD, when Christ was brought by the apostle to the city of Smyrna, many came to know the Savior and they too were known as faithful Christians. And so this encouragement from Christ, be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. They were faithful Christians. In fact, the bishop at the church at Smyrna when these words were written by Christ, by John rather, was one of John's disciples, one of John's converts named Polycarp, one of the great famous uh, church fathers in the second century. Polycarp who became a martyr for Christ. But I remember when I was a, a new Christian, and some of you, as I asked earlier, would probably agree that when you first become a Christian, especially if you're younger, you don't know that much about the historical evidences that so clearly confirm and establish the Christian faith as real and historical and accurate. And I must confess that the devil placed in my mind several times the doubt, I wonder if these things could all have happened on a cloud somewhere in somebody's imagination. I wonder if this really is historical at all. And then I came across a book containing the letters of Polycarp, who lived in the first and second centuries. He's not part of the biblical records, but he did write many letters. And I was thrilled when I discovered his conversations that he had had with the Apostle John, how they had walked along the seashore, and John had told him about the times he had walked along another seashore with Jesus Christ, and of the teachings of the Savior, and how he heard the music of his voice and felt the magic of his personality. 
and how his life had been transformed by Christ and how he had stood at the foot of the cross at Calvary and heard the final words of Christ before he expired on the cross. And through Polycarp, this whole Christian thing was brought down and it was nailed into the bedrock of history for me. And my faith was strengthened by him and I want to thank him someday when I see him in heaven. He was brought to trial when he was 86 years old. And he said that all of his life he had followed Christ since he was just a child. And Christ had never failed him. He had ever been faithful. How could he deny him now? And Polycarp was martyred for his faith and received that crown of life. But the church at Smyrna remained faithful even after the onslaught of Islam when thousands of Muslims began to come out of North Africa and Saudi Arabia into Asia Minor, now Turkey, and trying to take over all of Europe. And they remained firm and resisted that onslaught until 1424. They were the last city in Asia Minor to finally yield to that onslaught. They were faithful unto death. Well, why the title Semper Fi? It's uh, interesting that I asked people in the last service, how many people knew what that meant? And to my amazement, there were very, very few. Semper Fi. How many of you know what that means? May I see your hands? Ah, oh, wonderful. How many of you have served in the U.S. Marine Corps? May I see your hands? Uh-huh. Well, as all of you know, it is the motto of the United States Marines. Now, they are a glorious corps. They are older than the United States. They were formed by the Continental Congress in 1775, before the Constitution, before the U.S. government, before the Revolution. And they have fought in every war that the United States has ever been in. Truly, as the Marine hymn puts it, from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we will fight our country's battles on the land and on the sea. <laughs> and then uh, somewhat good-naturedly, if the Army and the Navy ever look on heaven's scenes, they will find the streets are guarded by the United States Marines. Well, though such high-spirited words uh, encourage and lift the spirits of would-be Marines, I'm afraid that's not theologically sound. <laughs> With 10,000 times 10,000 angels, there's really no need for Marines. Not only that, there's nothing to guard the streets from. There will be no thieves, robbers, murderers, villains of any kind in the streets of heaven because all of Christ's enemies will have been cast into outer darkness and will never be heard from again. But we understand the sentiment which is expressed. Semper Fi, the shortened form of Semper Fidelis, which means always faithful. And I will say, and you think about it, the United States Marines, though not a group of angels, have done extraordinarily well in exemplifying that motto for well over 200 years for the entire history of the United States, from Guadalcanal to Tinian to Okinawa and all of the rest of the places where the Marines have landed, the U.S. has been victorious. I wonder about you. Are you always faithful to Jesus Christ? 
If you are part of the me generation and if you are looking out for number one and putting number one first, you're not faithful to anyone but yourself. So many people today are not faithful to their spouses. They're not faithful to their churches. They're not faithful to Christ. Jesus was the ever faithful Semper Fidelis man. The book of Revelation calls him that sat upon the white horse whose name was Faithful. And his followers in Revelation 17, it's described as, and they that were with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Faithful, of course, means full of faith. There are people today that are faithful They're faithful to their own selves. They're faithful to their own bank accounts. They are faithful to their own advancement. They're faithful to themselves and nothing else. They're faithful to their quest for pleasure, but they're not faithful to Christ and his church. They're not serving him faithfully as the U.S. Marines have served their country through their core. We should be faithful to Christ and serve him through his church. We're called to be soldiers of Christ. We're called to endure hardness for his sake. We are told and admonished by Christ, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Not a miserable, half-living existence like many people eke out in this world, filled with sorrows and pains and aches and heartaches and heartbreaks and finally death, but a glorious, everlasting, never-ending, imperishable life in paradise in a body that will never grow old, will never get arthritis, will never ever die. Christ says, I will give them the crown of an imperishable and never-ending life. And to whom will he give this gift? To those that are faithful. Now note well that we are not saved by our own doing. We are saved by faith in the faithful one who is Christ because none of us, if the truth is really known, are semper fi. We are more or less faithful at best. But Christ is the ever faithful one And when we take hold of him by faith, his faithfulness flows into us. And so therefore, one of the inevitable qualities of those who are connected to Christ by faith is that they are filled with faith. They are faithful unto death. Now, the sufferings that I mentioned with Polycarp and others in that church and which were so prevalent in the first three centuries of the Roman persecutions when 10 huge tidal waves of persecution swept across the Roman Empire from Nero to Diocletian, rising with ever greater crescendo of fury, horrific, terrible, unbelievable tortures that only the most depraved of minds could conceive of, where everything imaginable was done to Christians. That did not end in the third century, but it goes on through the centuries and amazing to tell, mirabile dictu, in the 20th century there had been more martyrs for Christ than in any other century, including the first. Millions upon millions of Christians have been found faithful unto death in this century. The Chinese in the Cultural Revolution killed every Christian they could find or get their hands on. The Koreans in North Korea took whole bodies of Christians and marched them onto bridges and pushed them off the bridges into freezing water amidst the ice to freeze and drown. And so it has been. And so it is. Are you faithful unto death? Salvation, as I said, is through faith in Jesus Christ, but our faithfulness is the only way that we can reveal the reality of that faith. Am I a Christian? Are you? The only way that you can know that I am a Christian, that I have faith, that I am filled with faith, 
The only way that you can know that is that I am faithful. And dear ones, I am worried about some of you. I do not see the faithful service of Christ in the core of his church, the soldiers of Christ. You are not faithful. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Ah, dear ones, how our nation, how our church needs faithful ones. I hope that this day, many of you will commit your lives or commit him afresh to be faithful unto Christ. And you will take for your own the motto of the United States Marines, Semper Fi, ever faithful, O Christ, my King. May we pray. Lord, forgive us for our infidelity, for our unfaithfulness, for our lack of service, for our presumption that because we have made a profession of faith and attend a weekly ceremony that we are soldiers of thine, for we have been unfaithful in so many things. We do not serve thee, we do not witness to thee. We do not give as we should. O oh God, we repent while yet there is time that we might be among those faithful ones who shall wear upon their heads the crown of life and be the recipients of that gift of a never-ending, imperishable, glorious, eternal life which thou wilt give unto them who art faithful unto death. In thy name, O Christ our King, we pray, amen. I hope that you are faithful to Christ and are serving him and telling others about him and what he's done for you, but you cannot do that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. The wonderful news of Christianity is that Jesus Christ lived a perfect life and then he died on the cross to pay for our sins, and he offers us the free gift of eternal life. He comes to give us life abundant, life to the full, and if we will repent of our sins and place our trust in him, he will enable us to live a godly life, not perfect on this side of heaven, but growing each day more Christ-like. Do you wanna know what it means to be a Christ follower and to know peace with God? If so, pray with me this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you suffered and died for me upon the cross. I believe that you rose from the dead for me to pay for my sins. And right now, I repent of my sins and place my trust in you, asking you to come into my life, to cleanse me and forgive me. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. It's in your name I pray, amen. If you just prayed that prayer and meant it, this is what Jesus Christ says. He who believes in me has everlasting life. What a promise. To help you grow in your new faith, we wanna send you beginning again, which is what you're doing. You'll be encouraged as you read scripture, learn how to pray, and even study the Bible. To receive your copy of Beginning Again, just write to our address or call our toll-free number, and may God richly bless you. Church history is full of Christians who have been faithful unto death, where the metal of faith is truly tested. Today, regrettably, millions of Christians are being tested in similar ways. Thankfully, in America, things have not yet descended into violence, but it is beyond dispute that America has strayed so far away from Christian truth as to have become a modern-day Babylon. 
Just as Daniel and his companions were called to stand for the Lord in Babylon, you and I are being called here. And we have some wonderful help in that regard. Dr. Erwin Lutzer, one of our nation's most respected pastors, has written what he says is the crowning work of his career. It's the book, The Church in Babylon, Heeding the Call to Be a Light in the Darkness. And we want to send you a copy as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Dr. Lutzer, the pastor emeritus of the Moody Church in Chicago, has written this book to help you boldly face the challenges we're up against, including chapters on the transgender phenomena, immigration, statism, and false gospels that are affecting even the evangelical church. The Church in Babylon should be read by every serious Christian. Contact us right away to receive your copy as our thanks for your generous donation. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free, 888-332-3069. Or you can go online to djkm.org. And if you are able to give a donation of $50 or more, we will send you the book plus an exclusive new DVD program, Shining Light in a Dark World, featuring Dr. Erwin Lutzer discussing these compelling subjects and many more in his pastoral and wise way. That's the book, The Church in Babylon, plus the DVD, Shining Light in a Dark World, as our thanks for your generous donation of $50 or more. And as you give, you are helping us to shine that light via the Lifetime Channel and numerous other nationwide television networks, as well as training Christian leaders defending your freedom against the anti-Christian Southern Poverty Law Center in federal court, and much more. So please, write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 888-332-3069, or you can go online to djkm.org. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Kennedy Classics. We'll see you next time. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.